and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the words of the first and the last who died and came to life. I know your tribulation and your poverty, but you are rich. And the slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. I can already tell that it's going to be invaluable to have Mark with us. He has connections to a lot of different specialists in many of these locations. Semina is the most beautiful city of Ionia. It's the political and commercial heart of the city. We are at the courtyard of Agora, the city center of the modern city. So tell me a little bit about your background. How are you connected to the... The Agora excavations? Yeah. Well, I'm an archaeologist, uh -huh. and I'm working for here more than 12 years. I'm the part of the excavation team in here. During the archaic period, the city of Simeno was located at Bayrakli, on the other side of the Gulf of Izmir, at north. This building is first built in the 2nd century BC. What are the different layers that we're seeing here on the walls? Well, we have two different layers of stucco, or the plasters in here. Most of them made after the earthquake, which is, takes place in the Agora in 177. It's a huge earthquake. The whole city is collapsed. So by the generous aid of Marcus Aurelius, the emperor didn't take any taxes for 10 years, and they rebuilt the city in such a small amount of time. So you can see lots of different layers in here just because of the fast reconstructions in here. Turkey has been struck by a powerful earthquake off its Aegean coast, a magnitude of 7.0. At least 20 buildings have collapsed. More than 70 people lost their lives and nearly a thousand were injured. We know from history that Asia Minor is prone to large earthquakes. About a week and a half after being in Turkey, that was the epicenter of this 7.0 magnitude earthquake that hit the region. And that was just scary. We missed that earthquake by just a week, week and a half. So to realize what we read about in the history of these cities is still going on. I'm starting to see inscriptions. Some of them are quite new. Yes. Yeah. This is just because of the part of the vandalism yes. the modern people made. But these are the graffitis. People can imagine the harbor and the ships, yeah. so they can come here and depict it. And this area is open to the citizens, the normal people. They are mm. shop vendors, mm. they are tenders, they are trying to sell their goods in here. It's hard to imagine, but there are hundreds of people in here, so when they are selling their goods, they can depict something. And they are not artisans, mm. they are normal people, just like you and me. Now there's some special graffiti that yes. we want to try to see. Yes. Are we able to go in and see that? Well, normally our permission is for the inscriptions of the Christianity, yes. but we can take a general plan in here. There are thousands of the graffitis in here. I think it's approximately 3,000, but some of them is just a letter, mm. some of them huge, some of them are just depicted to daily life. You know, you're talking about graffiti that has been preserved for thousands of years. A lot of our modern graffiti is done with spray paint. It's just this topical application of paint. But ancient graffiti was scratched in. So you're talking about an engraving where someone has taken a piece of bone or a piece of stone and they've etched the image into a pillar or the pavement. And then in some places they'll blow in some chalk or charcoal dust to make it stand out. So as far as what actually stands out, it depends on how deeply they etched the image. And sometimes it's not very deep. It was hard to see sometimes, especially with the light. It was like going on some crazy Easter egg hunt. 
Yeah, we're looking at one of the earliest Christian inscriptions that we have uh, as a graffiti here. So, so this is the noun form of the verb we find in Revelation 13, 18. Calculate the, mm. the number uh, of the man, 666. So, so this is how they calculated it. Because each letter represented a number. Mm. Yes, they are. So a Christian by the name of Artemidorus in Smyrna uh, incised this uh, graffiti here telling us that the sum of the letters in Lord, Kurios, mm. equals 800, and Pistis, Faith, equals 800 mm. as well. So he's noting that here on this uh, mm. column, so it's quite interesting. Just a fragment of graffiti. Yeah, and one of the most interesting groups of graffiti where we have are called uh, love-based graffiti. Uh, when they'll write here, I love the girl mm -hmm. whose number is yes. 745. <laughs> so, yeah. because you can calculate the girl's name with a uh, with numbers, numbers. and uh, they did that. Mm. Interesting. Every culture has that. Yeah. Every culture depicts its life through art. There are times where the graffiti is an image or a symbol that communicates the idea of oppression and persecution and trial, where they're leaving images that would be recognizable to their people, but not necessarily to everyone else. Like a secret mark or a secret handshake that only those who are initiated would understand or recognize. So Christians would have to communicate with each other much more carefully. These pieces of graffiti that have Christian imagery, they're all over the ancient world speaking to how far Christianity had spread. You see what life is like through the eyes of the artist. And Smyrna, out of all the cities, is not particularly wealthy historically. Economically, it was on the lower end. And so these people would have been your average blue collar people, living life and trying to be a disciple under their circumstances. So that's super relatable. I mean, any blue collar worker, anybody who has less, this is where you would have been. And so to read through that letter and to realize Jesus understands them, he understands their daily life, he sees them, looking at that everyday graffiti really reminded me of that. And so there was value even in that graffiti, not just the, the Christian artwork. What we know from the biblical text in Revelation is that the saints in Smyrna were about to undergo increasing testing and tribulation. And he was preparing them for that. What he tells them to do is to be faithful unto death. What he's helping them think through is, not all of them are going to live through what they're about to go through. There's not much more that he tells them specifically about their future circumstances. What Jesus is preparing them for is, is external opposition. And that still happens today. That still happens in different places, different countries. Some are more restrictive than others. But there are Christians who have to think through, how am I gonna remain faithful to Christ in an environment like this? I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.